The Cuban Missile Crisis in 1962 was a major event of bipolar confrontation that once brought the world to the brink of nuclear war. However, have you ever wondered how the missiles were secretly transported to Cuba from thousands of miles away, and how they were discovered? The crisis occurred from October 16th to 29th, but the ballistic missiles that triggered the dispute were authorized for deployment in Cuba in May. In fact, the Soviet Union was initially hesitant about deploying intermediate-range ballistic missiles in Cuba that could directly attack the United States. This hesitation was seen as a sign of weakness by the Cuban side, and it seemed that they might lose Cuba as an ally considering the possibility of exchanging the missiles in Cuba for interests in Europe in the future, they eventually agreed to this risky plan. In order to keep the operation secret, the Soviet Union sent an agricultural delegation in the spring of that year. On the surface, they were there to help Cuba develop agriculture, but in reality, some military and missile experts were mixed in with the delegation. These people were probably involved in the preliminary reconnaissance and evaluation. The subsequent formal operation was named the Maskarovka Plan. In the early stages of the plan, even the participating troops did not know what they were supposed to do. They were even given winter clothing and chemical equipment, making it seem as if they were going to a cold, snow-covered area. This was all a diversion, and even the captain only found out the destination after reaching the Atlantic Ocean. In July of that year, a group of agricultural experts, machine operators, and others arrived in Cuba, but they were actually technical personnel related to the missiles. Subsequently, the Soviet Union transported a force of over 40,000 troops to Cuba in total. The ballistic missiles transported to Cuba by the Soviet Union had an effective range of 2,000 km for the R-12 and 4,500 km for the R-14. The first batch of missiles arrived on September 8, and by October, multiple missile launch sites were under construction. So how did the United States discover that Cuba had begun deploying ballistic missiles? The more common explanation is that you, two high-altitude reconnaissance photos taken in mid-October revealed it. In reality, the United States had already discovered the problem earlier. Cuba began to equip itself with Soviet-made surface-to-air missiles in 1961, which were originally defensive weapons and did not attract much attention. However, in September, U-2 reconnaissance aircraft discovered some interesting phenomena, namely that the way the surface-to-air missiles in Cuba were deployed was the same as the way the Soviet Union protected ballistic missiles, implying that Cuba might have ballistic missile bases. At the end of September, U-2 also photographed Soviet transport ships with unusually sized cargo crates on deck. The reconnaissance photos on October 14 provided further evidence, revealing construction sites in western Cuba, and the analysis confirmed the hidden missiles. In addition to high-altitude reconnaissance, the United States also mobilized spies, and a large number of reports were sent to the intelligence department in a short period of time. Some of these reports caught the interest of the intelligence personnel, as they mentioned a large number of trucks carrying what appeared to be missile-covered canvas covers, much larger than conventional surface-to-air missiles. Taking all this information into account, the United States Intelligence Department had already determined that Cuba was deploying ballistic missiles that could directly attack the mainland. Subsequently, negotiations began with the Soviet Union, and the crisis officially began. Eventually, the Soviet Union withdrew all the missiles.